video, I'm going to show you the difference in the hardware that was in this arcade machine compared with the uh, you know the standard run of the mill of what's being used in most of today's machines. I like to start off with the button. This is the entire button assembly. You'd be alright if you didn't know what the a regular button is supposed to do. This is as basic as you can get with the button. This is the best way to put it. Each one of these wires here has a different contact. And a button is basically making the two contacts touch in some means or ways. This is a very, very old, very, very crude button. And that's what these use. That's about as old as a button as you're going to find anywhere, period. It works, though. I mean, all it is is a uh, little uh, threaded tube with a spring in it and uh, a plug with a cap. <laughs> and that just pushes them and makes them contact. That's pretty dang simple, but it's big and clunky, and I'm surprised they used this thing in that tiny arcade machine. This is today's buttons. A little same uh, housing construction. A threaded tube spring with a uh, another plunger in it. But the switch is significantly different. The switch is actually able to be integrated, and this is pretty much a MIDI switch. It's that it's. Oddly, it's the same construction, just in a much smaller housing, and you've got more options. It's got an open and close connection, so you can have it normally closed, and when you push the button, it opens it, or normally open when you push the button, it closes it. And it's significantly smaller. It takes up much less space. you got more threading here, so you can ha use much thicker material. Sorry for blurriness. My camera doesn't have an autofocus when video mode. It just auto-focuses every time before each video. I apologize for that. And this monster. Ooh, this thing is huge. This is a joystick. It's a four-position joystick. This thing is like, got layers. This thing's huge. This is basically uh, like a rubber grommet. That's the pivot point. If you know what an engine mount is, it's almost the same construction, just on a little smaller scale on this end. We've got these uh, ancient reed switches, and it's pretty much just got a little, little ball at the end of the uh, stick there, and that just pushes on each reed switch. Old, but basic. And giant. And heavy. That's your... Uh, extremely ancient joystick. Today's joystick, just like the button, that's the same design, just more integrated, more basic, lighter, significantly, and uh, is much more user-friendly. It's got pre drilled mounting holes, so you just mount this one piece instead of this contraption, having to actually go through part of the, uh, part of the uh, controller console. This just needs a hole for this and mounts on the bottom, so it's much easier to mount. And uh, like the button, it also uses these same little micro switches. And of course, that gives you the option of having normally open and close. But this has a square plunger, so it can push two at once. So theoretically, if you wire this up right, you can have an eight position switch. And it's a lot better contacts to be a newer and all. Other than that, that's the uh, difference in the uh, technology that's used in this ancient Rally X arcade machine. This has a year of 1980. This thing's actually five years older than me. <laughs> that's pretty neat. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the. Uh, little showing off of the uh, technology differences. I don't have a new coin box, so I can't even show the differences in that. But, you know, today's coin boxes are, like, super smart. They actually have, like, processors in my crap that can tell you if you actually put a quarter in or, a, like, a metal slug. That thing, you could stick 
vlogs in all day long and it wouldn't care. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed.